Are you tired of the typical libraries with conventional music that makes you feel meh? Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Our team are lifelong musicians and producers in love with music. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality. Mark the difference with music of signature at lyrics.com. Says, how do you love me when I'm down? And this is a fantastic song uh, from a band from New York. That were you too. And we have here uh, the main members, a uh, singer and guitarist. We have Joe in the, uh, the vocalist. And we have Phil as the guitarist. So, hello. How are you doing? Doing great. Hey. Okay. What's going on, brother? Hey, so how do you love me when I'm down? This is this fantastic song and uh, it has everything. It has all the instruments, it has all the melody. Take the floor. It's one of those songs that when we started it, uh, we were looking to do something that kind of had like almost like a vaudevillian kind of, you know, music hall quality to it. It does. Yes. This is Joe, right? Talking. This is this is Joe. So, how about your voice? Uh, this is incredible. What What do you do? I mean, how many years? All the years <laughs> to get that to, is, to that this is, incredible level. Ah, uh, well, that is super kind of you. That is super kind of you. You know what? I, I'm just so lucky that you know I get to do this. I. Uh, Years ago, I just always enjoyed writing lyrics, and I was very fortunate enough to kind of, you know, always hook up with people who said, oh, "I don't want to sing it; you sing it." <laughs> 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 and, and, and from there on, history was written. No, I well, I, I just I'm lucky, you know. I, I do work at it. I, I try to improve as I go along. I, you know, but. I've just been very fortunate over the years that people actually seem to want to listen to me sing. <laughs> so they haven't told me to shut up yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Phil, um, what is your part uh, on this song, on this project? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, and... so uh, so you know, my, I'm really the uh, uh, I, 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 I'm the the idea guy. You know, I'll I'll come up with the concept. I'll hear something. Uh, I'll sit down and noodle in the office one night and I'm kind of like, you know, uh, a riff will come, uh, a part will come. Uh, and this, this, this track really began, began with just like layering guitar tracks of the main, the main riff that goes behind the chorus. So we kind of began with that and it built, and it kind of built off that. It didn't really start off with that Vaudelian feeling. Um, but by the time we got, you know, the, the song panned itself out and we got, uh, you know, our horn section involved, uh, the horn section really just kind of took the song over the top. Uh, we, we were really blessed to work with uh, this, this fantastic horn player, Pete Bloom. He takes our music and kind of, you know, if I can get it to, to five on the scale, we're in good place. I know when Pete comes in, he'll take it from five to ten, you know. Um, so we, we kind of blessed to go through that process so you know i'll come up with an idea i'll hand it to joe he'll give me the uh you know he'll give us a, a vocal or he'll give us a, a lyric and then you know the, the musicians will get involved and really put the icing on the cake just following up on what phil was saying there you know it, it really is a partnership where uh, you know with phil when he comes up with the initial idea the demo and he sends me the demo 
and I'll listen to it. And it's again, it's like the idea of like a, you know, a sculptor giving a piece of marble. And it's like the song reveals itself, you know, you, you start chipping away at the marble and then the idea for the vocal melody and the lyrics start to come out of it. It's almost like it starts writing itself after a while. You know, you, you work at it, you work at it. And then all of a sudden you have these aha moments of like, oh, this is what the song's about. You get an idea of what the vocal melody is. And then all of a sudden it starts to fall into place and the lyrics start coming to you and you start coming up with like a theme and a concept. And it really is a partnership where, you know, Bill will have the initial demo idea that he sends me, which is really, really polished. It's filled with great hooks and really provides a great catalyst, a launch you've had for me to start thinking about, oh, where's this song going to go? And then as I start thinking of like, oh, I got a lyric idea, I got a vocal melody idea, then I'll pitch it to Phil and we'll start talking about the themes and I'll give him an idea of like what the vocal melody sounds like. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can do this afterwards. We'll add another hook in here. And then, you know, of course, like Phil was just saying, you know, we had like a, a concept of, you know, maybe what this song would sound like and gave it over to Pete Bloom. And when he started adding his horns on there, I said, oh, my God, this is a ragtime board build music hall song. And it just took it to a whole new level. Like, you know, it really just, it, it, again, like Phil said, it was the icing on the cake. It really just took it, it elevates the song to a whole new level. I love it. I love the way you describe it. Um, and it really happens like that. I would I would ask you how do you go about figuring out the, the parts of the discovery? How do you go about uh, you know figuring out the melodies or the lyrics? Are you more of that type of uh, you know the phonetically person that really let, just try to find what uh, fits uh, with the rhythm and, and the melodies? Do you have Do you do the, the other way? Like you start with the lyrics uh, first? How do you go about well, that? You, well, you know, it's, it's funny. It's, it's kind of it's a little back and forth, a, a little bit of both. Usually, when I first initially listen to the song, uh, I am trying to kind of come up with like a vocal melody, not really the words in themselves, but like a general sense of what this melody is going to sound like. And then as I'm listening to it, I'm kind of trying to picture in my mind the images that are coming to my mind that tell the story of what's happening in this song. And what happens is I kind of come across maybe a phrase, uh, you know, maybe like it's a line within the verse or maybe it's the, the hook line to the chorus. And so, sometimes it's Phil and I were talking about things and we'll be like, You know, be a really good line here would be, you know, like, we'll just pitch a line to each other. We'll say, oh, that's a really cool sounding line. That would work really well. And also, you know, I, I tend to be somebody who likes to write lots of lyrics and keep I keep a lots of notes. And sometimes I'll say, oh, I have this really cool phrase. I don't know what song it's going to go into, but I'll just keep it in my notebook. And you never know, it might fit into a song one day. And sometimes that happens, too. And a lot of times, as you're discovering the melody or as you're discovering some of the verse lyrics and you're trying to figure out who are these characters in the song and what are they trying to say to each other, all of a sudden, it starts to reveal itself. Again, like, you know, one line creates the next line, which creates, creates the next line. And it is a lot of back and forth. Nice. This line works really good. This next line, not so much. And you do try to complement the song itself. You want to leave you know, enough air around the vocal that the music gets to really stand out and the music gets to, you know, it, the music gets to sing. You know, the guitar gets this moment. You can hear the, the actual song itself. And the vocal should complement what's going on and be part of that, like another instrument within the, the song. Absolutely. I, fantastic. Perfect. Perfect description. I, I think it makes total sense that, um, you know, it's how it works. And... <clears throat> So you've been working. This is not the first time you both, uh, the both of you, work together, right? You have uh, had uh, other projects in the past and working together That's for true. about 20 years, right? So you know, Joe and I met. You know, Joe and I obviously we we have lives outside the music business, and our wives work together, and we met through that. You know, through a, a, a wives working situation. Um, and uh, we know we, we found a very very quickly found a, that we had, we shared a passion for all that kind of music, um, 
and we looked at different projects. Some worked, some didn't work. But you know, Joe and I connected, um, and we began to write together. And I said, "This is over, over 20 years ago now when we, when we started this process." And said, "This is our third album." Um, you know, first two with a project we call S2N, and we had you know two albums that a bunch of live stuff, open for, open for some national acts, that kind of stuff. Really? Um, wow. And um, and then. And then you know, Joe and I, the whole lockdown piece obviously comes into uh, in, into this process because you know, the world kind of shut down, and we, uh, you know, we started to deal with the, you know, all the emotions of, of that we that we were experiencing at that time, and that's really what pushed us into this project of a way just to kind of like, well, we we got to find a way to express some of these stuff and uh, some of this some of these things we're dealing with here. Um, so this album that we're just wrapping up now, as we just wrapped up, is. Uh, it's really a it's a series of expressions of our of our journey through through the lockdown. Um, so it's a kind of cool, it, you know, it, it it takes on this whole cool personal aspect to it as well to it as well. Absolutely, Absolutely yeah. an amazing story. Um, how do you want to talk more about that? Like, it seems like when you had some quiet time or some, you know, when the world was in silence, then you found each other back to create this project do you want to talk more about those that situation yeah you know yeah we, we, we really were in a live situation at that moment you know really the, the month before lockdown happened we were on stage at the chance um you know playing to a thousand people uh maybe a little bit less than that the chance but still it was you know to, to, to a big crowd so we were all about the live situation at that point And obviously that gets ripped away from you and there's no opportunity to do that and still really a very few opportunities to do that. Um, so that really drove us, you know, to like, we can't let this go. A lot of people, a lot of our musician friends were not doing stuff at that point. Um, but Joe and I were recording and we, we kind of looked at each other like, I, I know this guy and he, he set up to record. And we know Joe, a drummer, a trumpet player, a violin player, all these people in different corners of the world were kind of available and home and looking to do something. Uh, and we had some content that we were looking to talk about, some issues we were working our way through that we wrote about. Um, and, you know, the, the whole thing came together through that process. It's really cool. Really, really cool for us. Yep. I, I remember Phil uh, I said something to me very early on when we were talking about this and thinking about, uh, you know, when we were first talking about writing new songs and what we were feeling during the pandemic. And you're kind of feeling like, ah, oh, you know, this, we, we feel like we're locked down. Like Phil was saying, you know, we've been, we were out playing, we were writing new music and everything. And all of a sudden the world shut down around us. And we're like, you know what? We really have a lot, to, you know, a lot going on in our heads right now. This could be a, a, a great catharsis for us to be able to write what we're feeling, what we're seeing going on around us. And, you know, like Phil said, we were just really fortunate that we had a few musician friends who were going through the same thing. You know, we always had these talented friends in our circle that were doing different projects and we were like, all sitting down in our home zooming each other and we're like oh we're at home too we can record at home we've always wanted to collaborate on something let's do it this is the perfect time so you know phil you knew uh sharon sullivan over in uh england playing violin we both knew uh pete bloom who was a fantastic classically trained trumpet player who plays with tons of bands And luckily, uh, we also knew I had a friend, uh, Brian Doherty, who happened to be uh, a drummer who he, he toured around the world back in the 80s with uh, uh, They Might Be Giants. He also played with XTC, Frank Black, and a bunch of other guys. So, you know, we had all these collective, uh, these wonderful, talented friends collectively who were itching to play and do something. And we said, okay, let's start with a song. Let's do something. What should we write about? Well, let's write about what we're going through. And the so, what was the first song we wrote was Social Distance. We're all in the lockdown. We all have to social distance from each other. But, you know, when it turned out, when we wrote the song and we started thinking about the concept of the song, and as the lyrics started, uh, you know, coming together, I said, you know, this song, Social Distance, really isn't about being distant. It's really about being, you know, looking forward to being together again. So a song called Social Distance 
really is a song about coming back together. Beautiful. Phil, what was the next song we wrote? Closer, which is also about getting back together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, I think we have a theme going we, on. But you're right, Joe. As you go through the album, you know, I'm going to say 80% of the album has this theme of, you know, distance and separation. I know, and it kind of reflected where the, you know, where the world was with COVID. I mean, we're not really big political activists, that kind of stuff, but you can start to look outside of COVID and say where the world has been and the world has been, are we apart, are we together? And those are the conversations that are happening in the world. Um, and you know, it kind of ties into the, you know, the themes of our songs here, which really kind of get into that, like, you know, yeah, we want to be closer. Joe and I want to be closer to people than we want to be further away from people. And those themes kind of reflected the what's happening in the world and what's happening in COVID and what's happening in our own homes and our, and, and our own families are, you know, the experiences our own families are having all have this common link of we are uh, right now, we're forced to be closer, but we want to be out. So it's, it, you know, it, it kind of reflected all those, you know, all those aspects. We were talking about it, like, I think, Phil, you said it to me once before. He said, you know, we really have a, a, a bunch of songs here that are really about relationships, you know? And right. again, it's about, you know, wanting to create unity, of what, wanting to bring people together, even though we're forced to be apart, wanting to be together, even though maybe sometimes in this world there's political division or, you know, different things going on, social uh, unrest and stuff like that. When it comes down to it, People are people and they all want to be together. 99% of what they want to do is live in peace and happiness and watch their children grow up and grow old. And you just want to have a little money put away so you can take maybe a nice little vacation and have a little joy in your life. And you know what? A lot of what we write about is about, you know, love, affection, caring, connectivity, unity. And sometimes, you know, some of the, the lyrics that might seem a little darker on its surface you know, when you're talking about like a song like Ghost Town and you're talking, the first line is like, uh, this town has turned into a ghost town. You know, empty streets, there's no one else around. Oh, so it's a real haunting line at the beginning. It sounds kind of dark and ominous. But then when you get to the end in the chorus, it's all about if we could just join hands, right? If we could just shine a little light in this world. If we could just join hands and share a little love, it's about bringing people together. It's like we're not so different. We're we're not so far apart, you know. And it's it's important to reflect on that. I think you know we we always try to write songs that yeah we want to we want them to sound good. We want them to be something we want to listen to, and hopefully, if we like them, somebody else is going to want to listen to them too. I want to so listen we, to them. You know, we, <laughs> that's right here, <laughs> and that's the thing. You know, we we hope that you know it, they'll they'll be something that somebody connects with somebody else, and that's what really matters to us. You know, it's like we're you know we're trying to express ourselves and hope that someone out there you know go oh, oh, wow that really means something to me or yeah I really dig that or or if anything that's a cool sounding song that sounds really good. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love it. Uh, the themes are, are about in, uniting. And, um, right. Yeah. I, not to cut you off there, uh, but even How Do You Love Me? When you listen, because I know you were just talking about that song. You, you introduced us with that. And yeah. when you listen to it, it's a funny kind of campy lyric. Purposely so. I mean, it's meant to be a bit of tongue-in-cheek with the lyric. Uh, you know, I'll meet, I'll meet for drinks at World War Three. I'll meet you for drinks at World War Three. It's definitely meant to be a, a, a pretty funny lyric. But the whole idea, again, is how do you love me when I'm down? You know, even though sometimes, you know, down in the dumps or not feeling the greatest or I could be making mistakes or I could, I could do something to take you off or something, you know, like or something's not going my way and I'm having a bad day or things might not be going the best right now. How do you still love me? And that person saying to my saying to themselves, I can't believe I'm so lucky that you love me. <laughs> it's true, right? And it's almost like an appreciation, you know? It's an appreciation. It is, it is. And uh, I I love the themes and the topics that you're mentioning. Um, you know, it's always it's always welcome. We need more of this. We need more of uh, you know uh, positive uh, positivity. 
and optimism. Positivity, oh, absolutely, man. absolutely. Yeah, Bill and I 100 hey. percent agree. We we often Hold said that. That's that's what we like to bring. Also, you know, we 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 did the uh, also we did all the the work on this ourselves, including the mastering process. And um, you know, in part of the mastering software that we ended up using to to, to put the final uh, CD and collection of songs together, it, one of the one of the boxes you had to fill in was what's the theme of this song, or what's the theme of the album, which I kind of like struck me. Huh? I guess you know, you know, this is something we had thought about, and you ended up filling that box and saying. We are all more alike than we are different. It's true. Is, that, that, that's what I put in. That's, that's, that's what we kind of. You know, that's what I sold into that box, and that really, you know, bring that from all those different levels, family level. That all ties into the themes that you'll see in these songs. You know, it does. And at at the end, you know, talking at the end, talking with so many musicians and artists and songwriters. The common topic is, you know, in a way, it's very similar to what to to your song. Um, we want to be loved, and we want to be loved. We want to be loved by what we do best, and this is creating music. And we want to share it, and we want people to like yep. it. Um, yeah, amen. Amen is right. That's exactly it. That's why. You know, when, when we're talking about, uh, I think we said before, you know, you're, you're creating something that never existed before until you made it. And all you want to do is share it with somebody and hope it resonates in some way. And, you know, maybe it, it makes somebody's day a little bit better or makes somebody say, oh, I feel like that, too. Or again, maybe it's just something they like to put on and turn up the volume and say, hey, that's just a cool sounding song. Well, you know what? It is. It's about being creative and wanting to share it. We want to get it in front of people. Exactly. So this good set way to ask you, uh, what are the plans to um, to play live or to shows? Or what's, what's, you know, what's the plans for that? Bill, you want to take that? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, you know, you know it's, this, our journey has been, you know, going from live to this recording situation and, you know, we really picked it up from a band type moment to just Joe and I. And now we kind of right start to look forward and go like, okay, now we need to bring this back to a band situation. But really the musicians that we recorded this with, you know, are not necessarily close by. You know, they're not necessarily local people all, all, all the time. So now we think like, okay, so now we have to start bringing You know, think about musicians that are local and people that we can take this together with, and what goals we want to set. Um, you know, I think we've we've done our time in local bars. Um, I think we like stages and we like playing for people who want to see live music and coming to see live music. Um, you know, I think one of our goals hopefully will be to get into like a local festivals and those kind of things. Um, you know, it, it, this summer would be great. If not this summer, then certainly by the following summer. Um, but we certainly have musicians around that we hope to be able to take these songs out live with, that's for sure. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll think for uh, the, the, we'll plan and uh, we'll look forward for the festivals um, either this year or next year. And, um, you know, about the recording process, who's responsible? Who puts it together? How you all self, you know, do yourself? Uh, How do you go about so that, that? That's all you, yeah. film. <laughs> that's all you yeah, film. so uh, so I'm definitely a producer of, of of this stuff. So I'm the I'm I'm the hub of the wheel, if you like. So again, I I'll, I'll create the demos. I'll send the demos out to Joe. I'll come back. I'll I'll take his vocal and put it back into what becomes the master session. Uh, I'll put the demo out to the drummer, who will give me back his stems, and I'll drop those into the session. Um, and then by the end, I've got all the all the horns violins, keyboards, whoever the person is who's giving me the, you know, the pieces that are, uh, are going on the, uh, on, on the track, I will then just bring those pieces together and produce a mix um, so that they, they kind of like. Um, so the, you know, it's, it's, it's different to what I've done before. I don't think it's, it's a novel concept from what I'm hearing you know, on other people's interviews and reading. I think a lot of people have kind of gone through this process, big names and small names. Um, I, I work in this way now. It's the way the world works. But it's you know it's absolutely astonishing that you can create uh, you know decent sounding music with the in, in, in your home. 
absolutely astonishing. Well, yeah. you know, if Billie Eilish can do it, so can we, right? That's right. <laughs> you know, Look, I, I, I'm not... it, it, it's always been this way. It's just that, you know, now you can, now the you, uh, the machines are smaller and they and cheaper and they fit in your in your house. Right. <laughs> yeah. Before well, I mean, was... trust us. What? Yeah. When we started off, uh, the machines weren't so small, and they it, was, it, it took a few guys to move those machines. When exactly. We were doing, right. You know, real to real eight track recordings and the big mixing desk and everything. And also, we would be paying for studio time, or you know, you, you have to be doing late hours to you know to, to find a rehearsal space and try to get everybody together on the same night. This is such a great benefit to artists and musicians everywhere around the world that they're able to just. I, I can work with somebody in England. I can work with somebody in New Jersey. I can work with somebody in California. As long as I know there's somebody out there who wants to play music and wants to contribute and be part of this, hey, they can do it. As long as they can record themselves and, be, and they can become part of this project, you, there's so much great opportunity. And you know what? Just, we're just very fortunate to do this. You know, being stuck in a lockdown, that again, We were able to create something positive out of what would be perceived as a very negative situation, and what people, a lot of negative negative things that people were going through at that time. And you know, we were able to actually, you know, do something that was creative and positive, and made us feel a lot of joy and happiness. That's humanity. We, you know, uh, we adapt, we survive, yeah. and and you know, especially. Uh, People like 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 yourselves, you know, trying to look at the trying to bring more positivity when it's most needed. Um, you know, that's absolutely commendable and very very appreciated. So, so what, one of the interesting things is that we found that we we approach this project with that mindset of of unity and let's come together and, and do something. And it it was. It's the, probably the first time I've come to a project where it's not been in the back of your mind. Maybe this is the thing that will make me something, you know, be seen by somebody or recognized right. by somebody for being good in some way. You know, that, that whole part of the psychology of most musicians who, who do what we do. Um, but I think we came to this from a very from that from not that mindset at all. We're like, let's just be creative and do something good here. And as we've yes. gone through this process, the number of times we've taken these twists and turns that we've just keep meeting people and having these interactions with people, which which reflect that. Um, so I, I, as an example, Joe and I, uh, we, we got our, like, we, we'd ordered CDs to give out to people of uh, uh, the album. And we happened to meet for a beer at a, a bar in Armand on you know, late, late last week. And... As we as we sat there, we were just looking at the disc. It's the first time we put our eyes on the physical product itself, and people could see our enthusiasm and excitement, and approached us to want to know what we were doing. And we were sitting there having a drink and talking. In the reality, now we didn't look for that. We weren't desiring that, but we attracted it just because we had this aspect of positivity in what we're doing and the multiple other engage, you know, interactions we've had over the you know the last 18 months that we've done this which kind of have been that which is the thing that in your mind you always strive for oh somebody recognize me somebody think I'm this somebody think, think I'm that which is all BS at the end of the day um, but it's always really interesting that, that finally by the time we came to a project from this human perspective which is let's just do something good And just help people, and let's not, you know, let's just do something to help ourselves on, a, on just a human level. It's when we've actually attracted most, most interest. Absolutely. Yep. Totally great. Totally great. Absolutely. Well, all right. So, once again, we have uh, W2 is the project, is the band. We have Phil, guitarist and producer. And we have Joe, is the singer, vocalist, uh, lyricist. And we're listening to How Do You Love Me When I'm Down. I got, I, got, I got a little shout out. If anybody wants to hear our stuff, if they're looking to find ways to connect with us, they want to connect with our social media, or ever find out if we're doing gigs and stuff like that, or 
hear some of our other songs, they can just go to w2.hearnow.com. So it's w 2 a r n o w dot com. So w two here now dot com, and they'll actually be able to hear the whole entire album and find all our uh, videos and everything through the links. Beautiful. So w two dot here now dot com. Is that right? You got it. Okay, wonderful. Um, the album is four corners of a circle. Is that right? That's right. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so, you know, these two um, musicians for the long run, a lot of experience, uh, you know, trying to create positivity out of, you know, uh, negative experience. That's what we all need. We need a lot of that. We need a lot of good music with a positive message. We got it. You got it here with W2. And, um, you know, thank you, guys. It's, it's been fantastic. So let's do it oh, again. Jose, really, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Likewise, likewise. All the best. So, all right, we'll stay in touch. And for now, we're going to enjoy a little bit more of How Do You Love Me When I'm Down? libraries with conventional music that makes you feel meh. Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Our team are lifelong musicians and producers in love with music. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality. Mark the difference with music of signature at Lyrics.com.